down. The Hangout on Air is live. Good morning. Happy Friday. Welcome. And let's get stretched. Morning. Let's get going. Get morning. those muscles pumped up. Get the blood flowing. <laughs> I'm broadcasting live from Ojai Valley, California. That's why my background is different, and that's why I didn't shave this morning. I got my little 5 o'clock shower. Good morning, Jay. Good morning. Glad is to be first here. first time with us? I think it may be. It is. So I'm going to go get Ian in here. I don't know where he is. And uh, so it's funny, Yvette, I just got your post that you don't see the link. I assume you got it. <laughs> yeah, I, actually, I um, communicated with Gina, and she put, posted the link for me on my chat. Got it. Yeah, cool. this is the first time I've, I've had, well, it's like Gina, where my cell, or my uh, iPad and my cell phone, everything alarmed. Well, I, I, sent, I started sending you guys personal invitations after I sent the initial group invite. Because, you know, what? I, I have you all in a circle called VIP. And so I invite that circle first. And then I go through and I look at all the people who RSVP yes, and I start sending you personal invitations. Nice. It worked. Cool. Yeah, so I think the personal, when I just put your name in specifically, is when it lights up your... Uh, your Hangout app on your phone, on your mobile yeah, device. The, mm -hmm. There hey, he man. is. Hey, Good guys. Morning, Mr. I was, I was on a different link. <laughs> you were? You're on someone else's Hangout? No, you sent me two. <laughs> well, they should have both taken you to the same place, but there are two of you in there. When I pull up your name, I see two profiles with the exact same pictures. So you... Like with mine, I have different pictures, so you can tell which one's the right one. You can tell. You know, Here is it. Not his zero one? balls. Woohoo! <laughs> you you told me I had to bring props today, so I brought a bunch of props. <laughs> That's awesome. I, you know what, Ian? I did not bring my balls today. I, I, because I'm in Ojai Valley, and I, I my balls are at home. <laughs> you not no, uh, <laughs> no, no, I don't think that's something you haven't said before. <laughs> oh yes, he has. <laughs> It goes along with you playing with your Ralphie. All right. Oh, you saw that. <laughs> yeah, when I rub my Ralphie. And Ralphie is my dog. I was about to say, we need to explain that you're yeah, Ralphie's sure that's dog. Clear. Ralphie is the dog that you see in my profile <laughs> picture. All right, my kids wanted me to share this one. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I got a whole stack of kids' toys over here, so we'll see where this ends up. Uh-uh. Yeah. All right, wait, we're getting all kinds of people chiming in. Ian, you'll be happy to know that uh, apparently a lot of people are interested in hearing what we're going to have to say this morning about Zero, the Zero product, what's going on. We've got lots of exciting announcements recently. We rolled out another feature on the quotes. We've got inventory right, a long-awaited feature that I'm sure people are very excited and anxious to hear about. So you know what? We're not going to screw around here this morning. It's four minutes past the hour. We've just gotten started, and I want to dive right into things. Ian, I think most of us know who you are. Most of us uh, have been around for a while. And uh, But just very quickly, for the sake of those who might stumble on the recording after the fact and have no idea who on earth Ian Basin is, just give us the 30-second high level. Who are you? What do you do? Who do you do it for? And then let's get into this. All right, so, that's, yeah, so my name's Ian Basin. I work at Zero. I've been here for the last three years. Uh, I'm the Vice President of Product Strategy and Marketing. Um, helped start the U.S. operation here with Jamie Sutherland, who's been on this call several times. As always, Seth, really happy to be here. It's 8 a.m. I got a cup of coffee. Let's get this going. I went away. Ojai Valley is interesting. It's one of these small towns where they don't let franchises in, so you have to outside the town to get a, to a chain. Yeah, I like the gratuitous oh, advertising. <laughs> I should just stand like this, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, you want to kick this off? I, I brought, you know, I brought some slides because, you know, what is, it, what is it if you don't have some slides? But then I also want to do a product demo, and then I actually want to have fun. So I was thinking also we'd save some, some time at the end. Not like one of these normal presentations where you get like two minutes, but I figured that we'd, we'd open it up for like 15, 20 at the end. Does that sound like a plan? Love that. So you guys want to jump on in? 
Let me, I'm going to try the screen share. It can only go wrong, so let's see what happens. Can everyone see me? So on, the, on the page, um, who are working, um, just post your comments there. Ah, there can you guys there see my screen? Yep. Yeah. Sure can. I can see none of you, so uh, <laughs> do whatever you want. Have fun with it. So... Uh, you know, Jay, Jay is, uh, Jay, you let the cat out of the bag uh, a little early and, uh, you know, on Monday. So Jay gave a little bit of an update to you guys before anybody else got it. But uh, this year, or this week for us, uh, has been a pretty big uh, week in terms of we've been launching product every day. Um, and I'm going to go through, through a lot of what that is. The big headline was inventory, um, which, you know, for us was completing a big part of the accounting job. There's me, and I'm not ashamed of so we've already covered that bit. So I don't, you know, I was trying to think back to where we were uh, when Jamie was on last. I think it was about three or four months ago. But I want to bring this slide up here, where you know we 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 only report what we do in terms of our fiscal year and, and half fiscal year. So that actually ends for us next week. So these numbers are going to change next week, and you know we'll be celebrating that, and we'll probably be uh, sending some stuff over to Seth to put on a blog. But uh, right now, you know, as we as we reported before, you know, we've got over 400,000 customers that are paying on our platform. And the first four years it took to get to 50,000, and then the last seven months was 120. So these are the type of uh, growth curves you want to see, and that's that sort of exponential rate you want to get to. So, you know, when when folks ask, you know, where we're headed, well, we're we're headed to some very 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 large numbers, and it's not because uh, you know we ultimately want to get there; it's because we ultimately want to service folks with with a great and fantastic and beautiful product. And, so it's all kind of coming together, and you're going to see what it is here. A lot of people ask, you know, what is it, the secret sauce for you guys? And it's not that complicated. Um, and, you know, put a few of these pieces up here. And, again, it's a bit, you know, the slides are a little heavy on the text. So um, Seth's got the slides, so he can go ahead and send that over to everybody at the end. But it really started for us at, at the beginning, and, it, and what makes our life a little bit easier than some of the other folks is we were born in the cloud. We were built in the cloud. You know, we started in 2007, so that allowed us to be able to leverage a lot of other things and a lot of good technologies and be able to stay on top of them. Um, the second thing, what, you've, what you're going to see here and what you're going to see throughout the whole this year and the coming years, um, we recently released our iPad app, um, which is fantastic, uh, and allows you to, to be able to go from an overview to the detail and be able to go landscape mode and all the fun stuff, but the whole world is now is about being mobile, and so... For us, it's about anytime, anywhere. Everywhere you are, zero should be accessible and be able to do what you need to do. And that doesn't mean it should be doing everything it needs to do. Each one of those form factors requires a different set of functionality to be exposed. So you're going to hear a lot more of this probably on the next call or in the next one on the Hangout and so forth. And then again, as you know, we're beautiful accounting software, but it is about beautiful design. Um, and hopefully a lot of you experienced it. You can appreciate it. It's really hard to create you know, a screen with a lot of white space and just exposing what you need to see. But that's what makes it easy. That's what makes the workflows really condensed. And that's what gives time back. But also, that's what puts a smile on somebody's face. This is what we are all about. <clears throat> so we're a platform. Everything that services small business on the left-hand side, you'll, if, you, if you guys have been keen, you'll note that anything that's blue is related to small businesses. Anything that's green is related to accounting professionals. And so on the left-hand side, you've got Xero. Uh, we all know and love. It's supported by the financial data and docs. It's, it sits underneath it, and it's extended with the add-on ecosystem of 350-plus. And on the right-hand side, Practice Studio, uh, which encompasses all the accounting professional tools, which can be management reports. It can be tax integrations. It's all the way to pra practice management software. And we also launched this week uh, work, um, work papers uh, that's available in the U.S., uh, though, uh, you know, it's still got a little bit of localization to be done, but again, it's, it's available for folks that want to be using it. And then it's extended by the modern practice, which uh, is, again, the add-ons that support you and your firm and so forth. So, Seth, checking in. Anytime you're doing slides, you can't see anybody. And only one dozing off. I know it's 8 a.m. here on the Pacific Center Standard Time, but, you know, the East Coasters should be wide awake. Never. We all got our coffee here. We're all, we're all spun. So, speaking of spinning, here's the wheel of goodness. <laughs> this is a small business platform, and so this is what we've been working to achieve. You know, it, it's not, you know, a lot of people might say that, you know, things like quotes and inventory, they aren't sexy. I think they're sexy. I hope all of you guys think it's sexy. 
But that is the table stakes. That is that is what you need to be able to support small businesses. That's what you need uh, in order to be able to, as an accounting professional, be able to get the job done. But there's a lot more to that. And so this kind of brings it all together. Um, everything from, you know, you need to be supported to having the infrastructure that brings it together. It's true double entry accounting. You've got to have payroll tied closely to it. And again, it needs to be working for everybody in your firm. And it's got to be accessible anywhere. So this was a nice little slide to bring it all together. And for us, you know, I, you know there's still some things that, that, that we're working towards um, and that we've got a few gaps. Uh, and so we're working on, but ultimately, from a small business platform perspective, it's all there. And you know, we heard a little bit on this on the last uh, the last meetup that we had. You know, it's all about the speed. I think basically, you know, what we've been delivering in this quarter can show you how we've been able to do a step function change in that direction. And I'll go to exactly why that's happened uh, in the next few slides. But we're developing and delivering innovation at a pace unseen by others in the space. And I really, really want to see them try to catch up. Um, so, you know, we've got a lot of work to do and we're going to keep doing it, but the speed by which we're able to deliver that is, is unprecedented. And I've got a slide a little later, but to give you guys some perspective, we did 400 um, releases last year, 400. And in this quarter alone, between January and March, we've done almost 180. And so not only were we fast last year, but we're going to blow out the number of things that we're adding um, this year. And it's not just adding features for features' sake. It's stuff that's meaningful, um, and it's the little things and the little details that make it easier to use and faster. Sound cool? Beautiful. It's beautiful, Ian. Beautiful accounting. Beautiful accounting. So this is where we're at. We have hit the full accounting spot, that little today pop that there. I've, I've been trying to get to that for, for a bit of time now. And now, you know, as we, as we move forward from that, it's really about these three other aspects. And some of you guys may have been at the Sleater Conference, um, so you got to see the business performance dashboard um, that's coming here very soon. But, you know, it's about the connected services, it's about the platform for businesses, and it's about the data that surrounds all that. And so those are the fun bits that we've been trying to get to, and that's where we're on right now. Um, on the full accounting piece, we've, we've checked, uh, if not all, uh, almost all the boxes there. Uh, and so we're, we're continuing to move forward on both fronts. How we do that, again, and, and anybody in the space, I know you've got a lot of great folks that come up here. These are the, the elements that they all have to abide by, and you have to overinvest, and you have to make sure you do it. You've got to have great performance. The data's got to be protected, and it's got to be stable. And so for us, those are critical, and we do, we're best in class on all those fronts. And what do we do and how do we do this? So this is, this is my slide for the guys down south in Mountain View. Now this is how it comes together. It's not that hard. You've got to have a clear vision. You've got to have the teams that are able to be brought together in a very close-knit fashion with a purpose. They've got, you've got to collaborate, and that collaboration is not just uh, for us, but it's for the product. The product needs to be able to collaborate across. Our teams have to collaborate within themselves. You have to take ownership of what you're doing. You have to be quick, nimble, learn, and move fast. Scale, this is where we, this is the thing that we focused on the last year, and I'll show you a little bit. Scale was something that we hadn't had and we had to put in place. And it slowed us down, but now it speeds us up. And the last one is really empowering. Inside of, inside of Zero, everybody owns their own section. They all have full control of what they need to do. And again, um, it, it spans not only within the engineering realm, but across the company. And so <clears throat> where, when you guys look at these features today, did they come from? They come, they come from almost every one of our office sites. So these are all the teams that are contributing or developing the product. You can see here in the U.S., we've got three locations, three major locations, San Fran, Denver, and New York. If any of you have an issue and you pick up, uh, you send in an email or you talk to one of our support folks, you're probably talking to, to a great person in Denver that loves the product, loves supporting customers, and want to help. New York, uh, some of the features that we're going to talk about today came from the New York office. Payroll came from San Francisco, but then again, Australasia, and then London. We've got a lot of folks that are on the ground working. You'll notice because of our roots, and, and uh, you know, we always twist the map to put New Zealand in the center. I always think it's funny, uh, but anyways, uh, it's a good one. It's always weird to see the U.S. on the right-hand side, but we're a global company. so. And then again, uh, you know, you guys, so specifically, Jay, you're on the line. Jay, thank you for everything you do. Seth, you, you as well. And then all the folks in this network, you guys are great because you're very vocal. 
Um, you keep it real. You let us know <clears throat> what's important, what's not, and we appreciate that. And that community, that um, that voice, really helps us in shaping what we do and our focus day in and day out. So first, I want to say thank you. But again, this is where it all comes together as a community. And by the way, Ian, um, while you're on the topic, you know, we were talking actually before you joined and before we went live about the fact that. Um, you know, when you sign up for Zero, and I, 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 I'm assuming it's as an accountant, um, but the point is that somebody reaches out to you. You get a live human calling you up and reaching out to you, which is so cool because it just makes it very clear that the support is there when you need someone, when you need some help. There's somebody there who represents Zero who can get you the answers you need and get them quickly. Yep, and, that, and, the, and the key on that is when we started as a company, you know, I used to have a slide up here and it's not up here. It, it's really a family. And, and the family is, once you, once you sign up or, or you, you, make, you reach out to us, you, you join that family. And a lot of us inside of Zero, either A, we're accounting professionals before, or B, we're small business owners or entrepreneurs. And we know how hard it is. And we've, we've been in that fight, and we, we, we know that you need to know that you have someone's got your back, that you can get the answer you need quickly. Cut, your audio cut out. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? So again, it comes back to the fact that we're family, but a lot of us have had the same experiences, and we want to make sure that, that we're able to be there and help you guys so that way you don't have the same struggles that maybe we had. Um, so we really feel and, and want to help. Does that make sense? That's one of our main criteria for hiring. Cool? Very cool. I'm going to put a headset on, so just one second as I switch. Okay. This might sound better. Does that sound better for you guys? Yes. Okay. No, yeah, you sound I mean, good. Yeah, yeah. Now, now I'm not yelling at the monitor or the wall. The wall is <laughs> the wall is getting angry at me. It's like, why are you yelling okay. at me? <laughs> I don't know if you heard me, but I had a special request that when the next person who reaches out to me be from Melbourne because I love their accents. <laughs> yeah, I'll get. Uh, you know what? We could probably we've tried maybe see an international office. We can play. Can you guess the UK accent versus the Australian versus the New Zealand accent? That so was really yeah. funny at the last ZeroCon to hear those different accents and the takes on different words that were used. Yeah, I, I, the, the, the one that got me, so I always, we always play around with this, I always have a good time with it, so yesterday I'm at a coffee shop and one of the guys is sitting there and I'm like, hey, you got your sunglasses on, I'm sure there's a different word for that, he's like, yeah, it's sunnies, I'm like, nice, I'm like, what's a bathing suit, is that a baby, or he says it was a bathers, and I'm like, oh, I thought it would be swimmies, <laughs> 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 gotta, love, gotta love the British English language. Um, so the, the UK versus Australia, though, is, should be pretty easy to distinguish. Aussie versus Kiwi, that gets a lot closer. But I will say this. If you're dealing with Kiwis, just call them Aussies. They love that. Yeah. <laughs> Never gets old. Oh, I, thought you were, I thought you were an Aussie. Sorry. <laughs> so, um, you know, one of the things is, is proof's in the pudding. Uh, I put these two things up here. If you want to know um, all the releases and what's come out, you can go to our blog and you can get to the release page and it gives you all the detail. You know, one of the things we really want to do, and if you really want to get a primer, um, we do a fantastic job on videos that summarize it in, in a minute or less usually, maybe it's a little longer than that, but really take you through the feature and what it is and why it's important. The next one is the feature timeline. So you can go back and see everything that we've ever developed, um, not all the way down to the, the, the very minute level, but to the, to the major features. And everything you can see in, in the progress over time, um, as well as to be able to get a summary of what that is. So it's it's pretty cool. Uh, a couple things to look at. It's uh, it's it's pretty amazing when you look at it collectively. You're like, holy crap. Um, mm. So last year uh, we did 400 releases. So I threw some in here uh, to give you guys a quick look at. Uh, there's a whole set of these. It just we randomly threw in a bunch of a bunch of these. Um, and I think since the last time, I tried to remember the exact date, Seth, and I couldn't remember. Here's some of the major things that have been added since the last time we all had a conversation together. Um, and so I put them onto to one slide here. Uh, and, and I'll go ahead and we're going to do a demo and I'll show some of these. But, you know, some of the things that I would look at here is you know, some big things like quotes uh, or estimates. Or we put a new dashboard in. Um, chart of accounts, we now have verticalized chart of accounts, so if you create um, as a new small business, um, a new, you, know, you, you basically are going to create a new organization in zero, you select your industry, it'll, it'll populate that for you. Um, one of the cool things we're going to look at here in a second is repeating journals and the ability to put placeholders in there and then to archive them, that's a big huge win. Um, 
you know, when I go down further, checks, um, we've done some work with checks. You can now do it in Canada as well, for those of you on the border. We, on the, on the reports, hopefully some of you have played with it or seen it, but our new V2 reports are, are amazing. Um, the level of personalization and customizability is um, second to none to anybody in the business. And we now have all the default layouts in there uh, for the U.S. Uh, and then you can drill down and so forth. Uh, the customization I talked about, and then again the native iPad app. So that's a little bit of what's changed since December, you know, not be, notwithstanding the stuff I'm going to go to now. So what have we added in? So what came in this week is we, we've added inventory, we've added to quotes the ability to make them online quotes to so the collaborative. Um, payroll is, is coming. Uh, we've added payroll uh, components through this whole year where we did e-services and e-file um, in January, and then we've been rolling out states uh, since then. Uh, but we're also we've also rolled out payroll or rolling out payroll in New Zealand uh, and also the UK, and then um, practice reports has been rolled out into New Zealand. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that, but it's not available in the US. Um, some features we roll out in other geographies before we we bring them into the bigger markets. And practice reports lets you do management reports on steroids. It's it's amazing. And then side by side files allows um, a lot of people here in terms of after the fact processing of information inside of Zero. this is really slick uh, way of doing that. Uh, and then again, it goes back to what's crazy is we're not only doing our updates now, we used to do them essentially once a month, but we are doing them daily. And these major features are done pretty frequently, um, typically once a week at, at, at the minimum. Cool. And Ian, if I can just interject, they're done behind the scenes. We don't even know they're happening. And that's the key. If you do know they're happening, that's not good. <laughs> so, <laughs> when they're when when and what we try to do is we try to limit the amount of communications. I, you know, in my old days and my previous job, uh, you know, it's about there's a fire hose of emails that you guys get, and we want to make sure that the reason why we put notifications in the app, um, and so so things flow through that path now. And I send emails on the releases that come out. Is when something's a, a an addition that's that's key and something is maybe changed that may change the, your workflow like the dashboard, we let you know um, and we let you know ahead of time. Um, we don't want you to be surprised and we, and we let accounting professionals know first and small business second so that you guys can deal with uh, a, a small business client um, if they have questions. But um, you know, most of this stuff happens silently and behind the background and so you get these nice little, uh, for pardon the, pardon the phrase, the little Easter eggs here and there. Um, that ultimately just make life easier, and and you shouldn't have to notice it. It should just you should just work and be magical in that way. Beautiful so, magical accounting. Auto, auto magical is the word that we're going <laughs> to coin. Uh, auto magical is used. Get another one. Get another one. Come on, Seth. <laughs> no love, man. Don't make me bring out a prop now. <laughs> you know what? I love the props. <laughs> well, the prop will be different than the usual ones. I was kidding. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, inventory. I'm going to demo this. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's get to screen sharing. We're the we're to answer sharing? here in the chat. People are like, "Show me the beef. Where's the beef?" I got one thing here, though. This is for you. So, I'm going right. to do my self promotion of ZeroCon Denver. It is in June second to fourth, and for School of Bookkeeping, fifty dollars off. Till April fifteenth. That's the code. And one one other piece of information. I actually just officially got the word this morning. I got my registration code for my free registration for ZeroCon because apparently I'm going to be speaking there. That is correct. So a little woohoo. I'm excited about that. And then I have to pull out the movie Things to Do in Denver when you're dead. <laughs> just do those after the show. Okay. Not before. <laughs> so guys, here's the here's the link. Fifty dollars off, um, and this is only for school bookkeeping. So uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna find the promo elsewhere. If you need it, uh, you got any questions, you can email me, email staff, and so forth. Sound cool? Let's get yeah. let's get to some product goodness. All right, uh, you guys see my crazy screen here of tons of stuff. There's Seth. You guys can watch me log in. Good fun stuff. Anyone nice. got a joke here? See if you can figure out his password from the speed at which the keystrokes come in. There we go. So this is the demo company. I reset it last night, um, so it's nice and f it's it's all nice and fresh. Um, I'm gonna hide that. 
if uh, we got any newbies to zero in the audience, or are we all uh, is everyone taking a look at it? Taking a look at it, newbie. I've newbie. never seen it before. Yes, <laughs> I've seen it at Sleater and things like that. So. All right, so I will go through a little bit of orientation as I go this, but I'll I'll, uh, I'll let some of the some of the stuff be excitement for you later. Uh, we always do uh, when you start up and you're fresh. You get you always get these green bars at the top, which help you navigate and understand the product. So I'm going to hide those as we go through. One of the things you guys uh, have noticed, if you maybe if you look at Sleater, is the dashboard is completely new. Um, it's got nice little richer, fresher colors, but uh, the cool thing is it's fully customizable in terms of what you want to show and how you want to show it. Um, you can orient it however you want. Um, the reason for this is not only just for now in terms of uh, what we want to present here, but this is going to be, uh, as we move forward through this year and, and in the future, a lot more widgets will be coming in from things that we'll be releasing, as well as um, the business performance dashboard that will come will also have some interaction here as well. And so, um, again, it, this total cash in and cash out is new if you haven't seen it before um, to coincide with what's going on in your banking. So let's go through first. Uh, in the accounts, we now have an inventory tab here. It used to be sitting in the settings for uh, your items, so I'm going to go ahead and here in inventory as it loads. Nice little video up here to teach you what to do. And you'll see here, this is the list of items that I currently had. Um, I have three new items that I've added here. You had asked for t-shirts, guys, so uh, I put some t-shirts in here for you. Uh, so what you'll see here is you'll see the quantity. These things right here are untracked inventory, and these things are tracked. If I wanted to take this book, for instance, and it's currently it was untracked, and I want to change it to tracked, when you actually go into the actual item, into the detail, you've got your purchase, you've got your sales, and you've got your, your recent transactions that have been happening. If I was to edit this item that pre-existed, you'll see here that on the edit item window, I can say that I track this item. And if I'm tracking this, it will then record the quantity on hand. When I do that, then I need to assign an inventory asset account. So I'd already created one for those other items. And then I need to go ahead and apply it to a cost of goods sold account. And now when I go ahead and save this, you'll notice, waha, this is now a tracked inventory. And all this stuff on the right, all this right-hand goodness appears. It shows me the quantity on hand, the average cost. So one thing to clarify, for us on inventory, we're only doing average cost. We're not doing FIFO. We're not doing LIFO at this time. Um, we're going to evaluate uh, the need on that as we go forward and build that out if appropriate. Um, but we are tracking the, inf the, the, other, the information through the app. Um, it's also good here to see the recent transactions, so if I'm adding quantity and so forth. Um, so let me go back to the inventory and show a pre-existing one that was created. If I go down here to this black t-shirt, got five on hand, and you'll see here I was buying those at, at an average cost of 20. You can see it was I did an opening balance and I was able to add that. Does that make sense? Pretty, pretty straightforward. Is that cool? Someone Very say, cool. Someone say something. Now, the first question I get is, can I do adjustments? <laughs> I get that a lot. Yes, you can. And it's pretty simple. You just go in here and you say, OK, am I going to increase the quantity? Am I going to decrease? Am I going to reevaluate it? When did I do it? So let's say I decreased it. And I go, oh, shoot, I looked at the back room. Someone had spilled coffee on my shirts. Oh, no. Life is miserable. It was two of those shirts was destroyed. Oh wow! I got. I must have three left then. I can go ahead and put whatever adjustment account that I have that I want. Um, I just need to pick something randomly here. It's not depreciation. Let's just pick uh, advertising. I don't know. I'm just making this stuff up. Um, shirts, unfortunately, are coffee shirts. And then I can go ahead and review. And then again, I can post. And what you'll see here is then it's going to make the adjustments here um, as the circling ball completes. This is, by the way, why you don't do Wi-Fi in your sunroom. Because uh, I am separated by about four walls to my wireless hub. So you can see here that all that's been done, and I can see that the adjustments have been made. See? Woo! Now here's some cool stuff. So let's go ahead and say that I'm, you know, I'm now in the t-shirt selling business. I'm going to go ahead and create an invoice here. And so let's say this is to Seth. So, David, let's say today's date is today. You know, you can pay me in 30 days. And I'm going to go ahead and add some shirts. Now, Seth, you know, he loves to ask for like 20 shirts. <laughs> I don't have 20 shirts. I've only got three. So what happens here is 
When I come into the field for the quantity, it'll show you exactly how much is on hand and it's in black. But if I violate that and try to sell more than I have, it won't. It will first show you in red, and a it won't. And next, it won't let you do it. We don't allow you to go no negative. Way, what, what if you really do? What's that? What if you really do? What if you have five in your hand and you go, "Oh, my inventory's wrong for some reason," but I gotta get this invoice out. Yep, you're gonna have to unfortunately do that adjustment, or you're first. gonna have to go ahead and yeah, you're gonna have to do that first or the PO. Now. Oh, good. So you don't allow negatives. I like that. Yeah, and so one of the things we're looking at going forward is we're um, going to help you know go to work towards creating another transaction in conjunction with doing this transaction. So a lot of times you may do an order. Uh, at the same time, you're going to do actually a sell, and in this case, uh, you would be able to raise the PO for something else and, and, and so forth. So we're working for those cases, but what we don't want to do is, having worked on QuickBooks you know, in my past and actually having worked a little bit on that inventory module, you, all sorts of bad things occur once you allow negative inventory. Amen. Yeah. Especially small businesses. You give small businesses enough rope, they'll, they'll completely screw themselves. So anyways, that's one thing. In, <laughs> That's one thing to note here. Go ahead, and I did two. Let's say I go ahead, and you know what? Seth's a premium player here. I'm going to charge 80. You can oh, change God. the general ledger on the fly like that. Yeah. Well, I'm selling. I can sell it at a markup. So yeah. Ah. Oh. So, um, because I want to be, I want to be able to mark up everything to Seth. It's at least 50 percent more, or 100 percent <laughs> more. So, anyways, if I go back now to, let's say that inventory item. Just to play around, um, you'll see here. And I don't know why my rates are high. You know, if you think my rates are high, that's because I got to charge markups on markups, and you know how that goes. <laughs> and you'll see here, guys, everything's just tracked here. Everything flows right through it like it should. Okay. Now, I'm going to go to the reports later, but just so you guys can see here, um, we will be rolling out um, some additional reports over time. Currently, um, if you go into the new reports area of Xero, um, this is where all the new reports are being built. All the inventory reports sit within the new area. Y you'll notice here that we've got one in here for inventory item details. There will be a summary report. There also will be an item list coming um, in, the, in the near future. Um, we wanted to get this out sooner rather than later. And so uh, the inventory item details report is what's available right now. And all of this is in the new report infrastructure for us. So again, your date ranges, you can adjust here. In the report settings, you can go ahead and change however things are displayed. You can add and remove whatever things you want. So let's go ahead and I can add unit cost and sale price. And the, up to, and the, the actual reports will update. I can go ahead and move things around however I want. So again, these things are fully flexible. Um, I can go ahead and change this and say this is inventory item details, um, more stuff. Everything here is as flexible as you need it to be. This is the beauty of our new report stuff. Um, I can go ahead and insert any content I want, all the other non fun stuff. But you can see here that this is going to give you the full detail on any given rep uh, Sorry, I'm getting a little bit of feedback from somebody's mic. Um, for what's going on within the, the, the inventory that we're tracking and untracked. And you'll see here I'm doing this across both sides. I have untracked items, and then I've got the tracked items, which is why the information is a little bit different between the two. Cool? Cool. Yvette has a question. Yvette, can you unmute? Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Hi. Hi, Ian. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, I just recently got a client, and I'm getting him on zero, and we're going to be putting him on the the Clover POS, even though I recommended Bend, it just works better with his merchant um, account. And my question is, how well does the inventory feature on Zero work with like a POS system such as Clover? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's, so uh, there's a couple. Whoops, sorry, we'll feedback. Uh, so I'll give you clarification. Uh, so clarification where inventory, inventory is good. Is good. Okay. okay. Go okay. back on mute. Go back on mute for a second. All right. So All right, for. So in, for in, Oh, that feedback's oh, that next. <laughs> there we go. Nice. So for, perfect. So then um, for inventory, where it's good and where it's not. Um, first of all, if you're dealing with somebody that's a manufacturing client or is dealing with a large number of products, a high volume number of products, don't use Zero's inventory to solve that. Use an add-on that's specifically designed to manage um, the inventory. So we're not going to be building um, 
subassemblies. We're not going to be building proper bill of materials work. Um, the reason for that is it takes you need to be focused as a company holistic, you know, fully on solving that complete inventory job. What we've solved here and what we what we where we're going is we're enabling for simple businesses. Um, an ideal one might be a service-based business, a service-based business that may sell some product, or a simple um, maybe boutique retail shop. Um, that doesn't use, for instance, a point of sale system um, that needs to be able to track a little bit of inventory on the side or, or what they, whatever they're doing, maybe not a larger operation. For those that are larger operations, you want to be using like a Clover point of sale or one of these, the, these other great solutions out there that are the transaction engines that are on the front facing side because they inherently have to track the inventory at depth. Now the integration with those guys hasn't changed at this point. Um, and so what they're doing is they're going to be grouping everything up and sending up as draft invoices across into zero, which is just fine. Um, going forward, we're expanding the API and launching that here hopefully in a short amount of time to allow for more information to flow across that pipe between you know, a point of sale and side of end zero. So the reason for um, building the inventory way that we have is to allow for that pipe to be more robust so you have more clarity between the two systems. Um, and also to enable these simpler businesses, the majority of, of which are like that, to be able to work with the product. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, yes. Also, so would I have to set up inventory on the zero side, even though um, they have, a, see, they don't even have a POS system right now. They are signing up with Clover. And so I'm assuming somewhere along the line we have to set up the inventory. Yeah, you because know, you're going to do them as awesome. you're going to do them as untracked awesome. items. Though. Okay, I'm sure that my my zero um, team will help me with that one next week on um, when we make that transition. If that reach out, to me. reach out to me. Okay, I might be able to help. I might be able to help you with that. And, All right. And okay. if, I, if I could add, add I, am, in, I, am, I actually am in the t-shirt business, and. I use an add-on called TradeGecko to communicate between my POS, my Shopify site, and my WooCommerce site. And it is so slick how that product works with Zero and keeps everything sunk together. And, and that's the type of product that Ian's talking about is these inventory seasons that are, that are yeah, the middleware, that are the middleware so to speak. And they're, they're just, they make your life so much easier. That's um, yeah, that's great. Thank you, Jay. Um, is there any way you could post your number on the chat? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not on the chat. I can't, I can't do it right now. Okay. Do it right now. But, All right. But, um, right. Um, how, how do I get your contact information? Email me at email me at Okay, gotcha. Thank you. And uh, Ian, we have another. Ian, we have another question. When you're ready. Yeah, sure way. So uh, Billy Ann Gregg uh, is lurking, as she put it at the beginning. Uh, she says, so let's say the client has a POS system and they run all their ordering through it. Will new items, changes to cost, et cetera, be automatically updated during the import parentheses? I'm assuming Zero allows for CSV imports. Yes, so we do allow for CSV imports. Uh, we're very robust in both getting the data in and getting the data out. Uh, I'm going to complete the fifth on that. It depends on on each individual integration partner that we have and how they've done their implementation. But yes, um, in terms of how our integrations are done, they're, they're really slick, as Jay was talking about. And what happens is the information will flow through and do the necessary adjustments. Um, again, because it's doing it as a draft invoice, it comes as an invoice there, and it's going to act like what I showed you before in terms of how the invoice is going to post. So um, that information would flow pretty freely. So I'm not concerned that it wouldn't do it, but again, each one of those partners does it a little bit differently. How can you show us how you get inventory in through, say, accounts payable? Um, again, I'm going to put the fifth because I haven't gone down to the depth of that. But okay. uh, if you want me to do like a purchase, if that's well, I know, I know that um, what I'm used to seeing is sometimes we'll um, want to increase inventory and the invoice hasn't come in yet, and it goes into sort of a temporary payable account. That kind of flow. Uh, it depends on how you how you're going to do it. So let me go back to. Create a PO here. It, you know, it, when you go to, if I go back to the item, mm -hmm. so if I go back to the item, one second. Do you require POs? 
So when I go here on the purchases, you can uh -huh. see where the accounts that are being driven both on the sales side and the purchase order, when I actually create the account, um, mm -hmm. when I create the item, I'm specifying what those are. So when I actually go to raise a PO or whatever the method that you're going to do, it's going to be driving that field in the creation process. Right. So, so sometimes we have inventory, the inventory shows up, the bill hadn't come in yet, but we need to we need to get it in the system so we can sell it. And I think sometimes there's a feature where it says the invoice isn't in yet. Um, you can create a workaround on that in terms of you you could adjust. So let's uh let's go ahead and Yeah, see I'm, I don't want to let clients do any adjustments. I want to see clear audit trail coming in through um Let me get back to you on that one. So I can okay. post I can post how to do that uh, after the fact. Yeah, I think it's all new. What well, well, here's we? a question. Here's a question. Yep. If we're if we're a an accountant and we hook up with zero, we get a demo account that we can play with, I assume. That's correct. Yep. And you said that you reset your demo account. Do we have the can we yep. do things like that too? We can just play away. So I'll do a couple things here. So for those of you interested, I'll just follow the path so you guys can see how to do this. Okay. So if I go to zero.com. What you want to do is, wait for it, again, my wireless is a little bit slow where I'm at. When you come into here, you're going to see this tab that says Accountants and Bookkeepers. Click that, and on this, you can sign up for free. Okay, once you sign up for free, it's going to, it's going to ask you this information, and that's ultimately going to spawn uh, one of our folks to call you up, mm -hmm. and, and that's to help you take the next step. When you come into zero, what will happen now, instead of you getting into this blue zero, you're exposed to, and when you click this My Zero button, you'll notice everything turns green. Oh, I so love green. <laughs> so this is, I am set up in the system as an accounting professional, so this is my dashboard to be able to see all the clients that I have. You can see here, I've got a QuickBooks sample service file in here. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of fun there. Um, but this is where I manage my staff, um, but this is also where my demo company is. You see here at the bottom, this is the demo company that I'm playing with. Mm -hmm. So if I go ahead, I can just reset this at any time, oh. and all what's been going on that I've been showing you has now been reset back to its native state. <laughs> now, in addition to this, you do get one free uh, organization that you can use as your own for your own practice or for your own purposes to play with. You can see here, uh, right here, Acme Bread was the one I selected. That one is denoted as the free one. That's my practice. And this is actually what we call Premium 100. That means uh, if you had 100 employees, this would be doing both your accounting and payroll for you for free up to that amount. So it's included with you in terms of so you can actually manage your own business um, and be able to play with the product. So you get the full functionality of the product to be able to use. Sound good? Sounds lovely. And so you can jump in and out of that particular, um, that particular file uh, to be able to ultimately do what you need to do and understand how it's done. I'm sorry again. It takes a little bit when I when I a reset, but again I'm on a I'm on a really crappy wireless connection. But you can see I'm back here now, and if I went into that inventory item, you'll notice that all of what I've been done is just gone. Um, it's reset back to its its original state. So there's no more Seth David in the system, and I just didn't make you know eighty bucks a shirt. Boo. Does that sound cool? You can see here I still I've got five left, so everything's set back. Good time. Team question. Um, yep. Since we have a group of accountants and bookkeepers sitting here, maybe it would be worthwhile to spend a minute or two just at a high level showing us the zero practice manager. Uh, I can. It's going to take a little bit longer in terms of I can go to so it's a little bit longer demo. I'd rather do that on another call. Okay, never mind. Then we'll hold off. I know I just threw that in as a curveball. Yeah. What I would say here is for two things. One is. The Green My Zero product is the is the client management view of what you're going to be doing. When you go into here to the Zero Practice Manager, I'm actually also putting the fifth because I don't think my account I reset my account. I don't think I can get into it. Um, so it's also part of the uh, there's there. Let's see okay, again, so, you yeah. can skip this this time and then because uh, we also have the new quotes feature. Yep. Well, I want to show a couple things. So one of them. Uh, you're getting me off keel here, buddy. I like it. That's my job. So I'll go through uh, quotes here next. Uh, one of the things is we released quotes themselves uh, a few months back. And so just like you have invoices here, you've got quotes down here, and it shows you what's gone through the system. 
whether you create a draft or whatever, and it'll show you basically the same sort of viewpoint there. If I create a quote, um, you can now create them what's called an online quote. And what that is is we can have a little fun here, Seth. Hmm. Uh, I'll send this to you. Let's say, Seth, because you are always wanting a T-shirt, let's send you a couple T-shirts. I'm going to send you these four. Make sure um, you got triple X. Yeah, I'm going to, well, I don't have that. So that's why you're going to deny me this quote. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and send this quote out to him so you guys can see quote. I'm going to go ahead and press send. I don't know who Seth is because I just put him in the system. So the system's going to say, hey, uh, you got to figure out the email address here in a minute. Um, so Seth, it's Seth at schoolbookkeeping.com? Sure. Nobody knows that. They do now. I'm going to go ahead and add the, the online link in here. So online quote link, you'll see that here. And that's where he's going to be able to access that. So I'm going to send myself a copy just for, just for fun. All right, and then if you want, I'll share my screen to show everybody what it looks like on my end. So now I've sent it to him. So go ahead and take it away. You want me? You want to take the take it back? Uh, we'll keep going. Stop. I haven't gotten it yet. Well, I've stopped sharing. So now everyone can see me. This is a good time for props. So what are we going to go with a prop now? Um, I do want to say one thing for all of you folks out there, and I know that the uh, Seth's up in L.A. It is baseball season almost. So I'm an A's fan. Go A's. Boo Anaheim. <laughs> That's for you, Seth. <laughs> And my kids love this toy. It's the... Uh, is that a Ninja Turtle? It is a Ninja Turtle. Teenage awesome. Ninja Turtle. <laughs> yeah, the, it's now back. They're now back. It's, uh, and they got these things you can, like, press it. And, well, didn't they come out with another movie recently? They, I guess they did, but it's not the I same. I love as, the Ninja Turtles. You know why? Because there's one Ninja Turtle in particular. I forget which one. It might have been Donatello who loves pizza, and so he reminds me of me. And then uh, this is the other one the kids like, which is the uh, the Jedi stuff. Jedi so. stuff, so. <laughs> nice, nice. Did you All right, you ready to see my quote uh, that I received? I received? Yes. Yes. All right, I've got it up, right, on, my got it up on my screen. Let me, I'll click on my thumbnail to make it uh, resonant. So everybody can see it. So it comes in as an attachment. I click on it, I can get my preview. It's one of the things I love about using the Gmail client and Google Apps for Business. Another brand plug. We're not um, seeing your screen, Seth. You're not? I no, see we it. Still see in. Click on his it. click on his icon. Or yeah, you click on, yeah, the icon. on my thumbnail. Okay, sorry. Okay, so everybody can see it. Everybody sees the quote on my screen. So that's the quote you get if you don't use online quotes. Um, it's always attached to the email body. And then please advise or accept the quote if you have any questions. So I'll click that. Wait for it. Waiting for it. You see it? Not yet. You must be in the same Wi-Fi connection I'm at. I'm using my Verizon MiFi. It should be perfect. It should be stellar. Oh, but you're right. I'm looking at my view of the screen, and it's not. Hold on. You Let's click stop it. and start again. I'm just going to choose my entire screen. That's why I was choosing a specific application. All right, now can you see it? Yep. Accept, yep. decline, or comment. So I'm going to comment on this. I'm going to say this is outrageous. <laughs> it's not. How can you not have triple X? And I'm going to send it back, and then I'm going to decline. Oh, come on now. All right, fine, I'll accept. <laughs> and then I can PDF it, which is neat. That's neat. It downloads a PDF. Now I've got my, my PDF record. That's what I call it, a PDF. Oh, you want to you wanna switch it back to me? Yep, I'm going to... Unclick me. I'm going to click on you. How'd that feel? I clicked on you. Did it tickle? It did a little bit. I'm a little embarrassed, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we roll on this call. Uh, so here we go. I'm, I'm in that? Zoom. Yes. You can see here, I've jumped from a draft to sent to over to accepted. By going to the accepted one, I can now see that what Seth has done. I go into here. I can see 
when I go into the actual quote, he's uh, sent me a note. This is outrageous. How can you not have triple X? But I've actually had the quote accepted because he did it in two steps. It, normally, you'd get the comment, and the comment would come back, and then I would we would negotiate to get to the accepted. Then I can go ahead and here. Uh, I can say it's marked as invoice. I can actually create the invoice. So I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, I'm actually invoicing this thing. I create the invoice, and now I can charge him. And everything is pre-populated, ready to go. Just go ahead and put today's date and what the due date would be. Oops. Pretty simple, huh? Clear as mud. So uh, I'm just looking at the time here. we got 10 minutes left. I can do one of two things. I can show you another one that's popped up was QuickBooks Conversion. I can show how that's done because some people have asked for that. I can show some new, um, more about the reports. Um, we also had launched um, Partner Trials, which sit um, at the Green My Zero level, so I can show you that. Uh, and then in addition, um, the report packs, I can probably talk about later, or it's the practice reports. Um, I can talk about it later in side-by-side -side bills. Um, it's actually going to take me a bit of time to share side-by-side -side bills, but I can explain it really quick and what happens. Side-by-side um, -side bills, I'll do that one really quick. If you go and you click in here, this is my inbox or uh, where all my files are stored within Xero. Uh, what happens in here is you see this address that sits right up here? If you take this address and you put it into your email client and you send files, it'll, all my files will pop, up, uh, will pop up here. And the way, what, what Side by Side Files does is allows, let's say you, you're an outsourced bookkeeper and typically you've told your client, hey, you know, don't touch any software, just I'll send you some reports, but I want you to mail me um, your receipts or your activity as you're on the road. And typically, then they would send it to you in this big, you know, huge box or, you know, you get this, like, mail, you know, this, like, UPS thing with everything in it. Well, what they can do now is as they're on the road, because, again, they may not be using the Zero Touch app to do it while they're in, in motion, um, but they can then go ahead here and just take a scan or a photo of those, of those particular transactions, um, those assets, and it will populate in here. You can then click the, click the asset and say, I want to create a bill, or let's say I want to create an invoice, and inside of Zero, it will show you the image of what it is right next to the actual bill itself. So here, this is the best way to show it. Here's the image of the receipt I had. Here's the receipt screen, and then I can quickly go ahead and put the information in across here, and then have the asset or the file that's stored in the system locked in with the transaction I created. So you have everything, A, entered correctly, but B, also archived correctly. Nice. So it's, a, it's another step towards better data accuracy and then higher efficiency in using the product. Wow. Very nice. Cool. So before we, uh, you know, we have like a little more than five minutes left. Does anybody have any questions? I, I have a quick question. The, th the, the one thing that is slowing clients down on the East Coast is the, is the lack of payroll in all the states. You, do you have a, a better ETA on that? Yep. I'm in Georgia. So you're in Georgia. I, I'll have to go back. We, we haven't announced the exact states in the order by which we're doing it. Obviously, in the East Coast, we're doing New York. We're doing Florida. Um, you should hear about some new states being added here very, very, very soon. And those states that we're working on right now are completing the seven states that we had originally launched um, with the product. That completes the services section of those particular states, and then we roll on to the new states. We have, just so you know, uh, mentioned in the press uh, earlier that we are aiming to get all 50 states done this calendar year. Um, so that's, that's a goal, but an achievable goal. And so it's not a matter of if, it's a matter just of when during this, this year that will happen. So um, would it Jordan, be a good idea for, say, me to use my free slot for my personal books to get used to downloads and how it works, and then 2016 uh, do, do my company? Well, it depends on exactly how you want to be able to be doing payroll. You could use, again, an ADP or a Zen payroll or something in conjunction for your state. Yeah, um, I don't want to do it mid-year, so if I'm already in the middle of 15, I'm not going to. Yeah, so then, again, I would use it to, to get up to speed, feel comfortable with what you're doing, and then I would roll over uh, towards the end of the year when, when you can do, fully do what you want to have done um, in the product. You may find that you want to support some clients on zero between now and then because it might be the right fit. 
at least now you have familiarity to support them, even though you may not be supporting yourself directly. You don't have a problem with me, say, using my husband and my personal books as my t as, as, as to start using Zero. No, I oh, encourage. Because I I use quick I uh, well I use another program for um, my personal because I like to stay in the same program and um, it gets me used to screens and reports and the whole reason why we provide that is a not is to give you familiarity so you feel comfortable with what you're doing so you can support your clients the best way you can so you're able to use that for whatever purpose you want I am not going to come tracing down why you're doing and what you're doing it for uh, <laughs> the issue comes in if, if a small business is using it and, and mask, masking themselves as an accounting professional then that's just kind of that that defeats the purpose and everybody loses uh, Again, yeah that's cheap <clears throat> yeah, that's cheating. Here again, you can use it for a client. You can use it for yourself. You can uh, you can use it to I don't know have a spot on the screen. It's it's yours. To, it's yours to do what you want with. Any other questions? Um, uh, resources for accountants, Ian. I know you guys have them. Let's talk about them for a minute. So when I sign up as an accountant with Zero, we already talked about the fact that somebody's going to reach out to me. And I know probably, I would say more recently, and qualify that as like I think within the last year, you guys started setting up almost like reps geographically so that I got a call from this guy, Russell Kibbe, who's got the Burbank area in Southern California, who reached out to me. So there's a lot of that kind of happening, um, and I assume that's happening everywhere, or as as quickly as you can, you know, get out in each of the different areas. Yeah. So we have what we have is uh, we've got for accounting professionals, um, we have our own account managers that support directly, and so everyone is assigned to an account manager, and that account manager is to be able to do whatever you need to have done, whether it be to help you find the training you need to be able to help give you guidance on maybe what Zero is right for or not. Um, they may also spark up our partner enablement team who can help you in getting your first clients across. Um, that might be for converting. Um, that might be for understanding uh, what needs to be done. I did see the comment there. I'll address that comment that came up in a second. Um, the other thing is um, we have, when you go onto our site, you'll see here on the more, there's the videos and guides in Zero TV. This is a good resource to be able to get the skinny um, on the basics, but also see what's been transpiring in terms of videos and what to watch uh, and how to videos to do things. But the next big thing here is if you go back, um, again, I lost the, the header there. Uh, if I go here to Zero U, Zero University is our training side, and you've got Right For Me training for whatever you might be. If you are a consultant versus an accountant versus a bookkeeper, or again, you're the staff, this is Right For Me training, so you don't have to necessarily know. Um, zero inside and out from all perspectives, but from the perspective that you'll be using it. And that has all the way down to the certification that it maybe you're going to want to do. Um, but again, it has all of the information you need to go through all of Zero. Um, we also have probably one of the bigger or biggest education staff um, for an account or for a, uh, for a vendor. And so we take it very seriously. And again, we provide not only rich content, but we provide live classes and the like or online uh, and on demand class, depending on what you need. Um, so again, the whole point here is we're here with you along the journey, um, and that's with people, that's with assets, that's with trading, that's with resources, it's the full gamut. And I have to say, the zero help area is awesome. You get very relevant results. I mean, I'll be, I, I, maybe I shouldn't admit this publicly, but it, it, you know I'm not one to uh, be anything less than completely transparent about myself if anything. So as I was working on the Zero course, there were a couple of points where I got, you know, a little stuck and I was like, okay, I'm not 100% sure how this works. Before I go record the video, let me make sure that I am 150% sure. And using the help files, I mean, I'm one of those people that if I don't find something I'm looking for in 30 seconds or less, I'm done. I'm out. And I was able to go into the help file, search for what I needed and quickly find and watch the first 30 seconds of a video and say, okay, bam, I got it. I don't even need to watch the rest of the video. I know what to do now. So. That's uh, that's my uh, little testimonial for the zero help files. It's it's really good. It's really well done. So it's funny. I was I thought I was screen sharing and I wasn't. So you, <laughs> I was talking to myself. <laughs> uh, inside of zero.com, here's the stuff. It's zero TV here and zero you, uh, and then inside of the zero product in the education and tools, this is how I'm able to see progress of not only myself but my staff across all the different uh, main. Um, certification and uh, coursework that's that's sitting in the product. 
So it's, it's fully immersed. And then here, when you're in zero U, here's the personalized training that you can go down. So again, if I was a bookkeeper, I could select. And then it goes through the details here. So best in class stuff here. And again, it's all to make sure that everyone is comfortable with what we're doing. Great. Yeah. Um, I just want to make a comment. I want to put, do a shout out to Justin James. He's my rep at, for Zero, and he's wonderful. And yesterday, I got a couple phone calls from people um, that work with Zero to help me out on my issues here. That's uh, getting a client on board and everything. And they gave me such undivided attention and help, and I really appreciate it. I just want to give a shout out to mainly Justin James. He's been every day just plugging along with me and helping me out. I'll pass it on. I'll Justin. pass it on. Justin's been uh, yeah, Justin. Justin. Great guy. Great guy. Yeah, he is. He's wonderful. The there was a question was that, a came question up. that came up. Whoops. I'm gonna. Yeah, there you go. You got, I don't know what's going on with your your microphone and your uh, and your headset or your your. It's picking up on both. There was a question that came up asking for um, batch reclassify. We call that find and recode. Um, so, uh, you know, yeah. code of silence here, but it's taped, so I guess it's not really a code of silence. Um, it is eminent. Um, it will be coming up in the uh, the next release of the release after. Um, and for us, that's you know a matter of a month or so. Um, so again, uh, we've talked about it at our partner update, um, and we we've talked about it at ZeroCon, but uh, it's not it, that find and recode is a really sexy feature. Oh, I, I think can't it really. Wait. <laughs> It really completes kind of the batch tool set that we've been putting out. So we did some batch spend, batch uh, receive money work that came out earlier this year. Find and recode allows you to then, um, it takes batch reclassify from QuickBooks and does it a whole other level. You're able to search wherever you need and be able to go ahead and not only reclassify, but you can do that in terms of the base source transaction, or you can do it as journals. You can choose whichever way you want to have it done. Um, and the implementation design on it is just, it's, it's beautiful. So um, it is coming. It is eminent. Um, you will have it very soon. That will really help the ones of us that are doing the reviewing type engagements versus the day-to-day -day bookkeeping engagements. So. Yep. And we're yep. cognizant of that. So that's By why the way, in our, in our upcoming course at schoolofbookkeeping.com on zero, there's an entire lesson on the whole reporting area and precisely focusing on from like a CFO perspective, how to use the reports area in Zero to review the books and get the information you need to make sure that your balance sheet and P&L fairly represent the financial position of your company. Hi, Jay. <laughs> hey, I, I have one quick question for Ian. Are there any more payment services coming in the pipeline? Uh, I'm going to claim the fifth year. I don't know. I'll have to go back to uh, Sid and David on the team, see if any, any of them are coming. I know the last one that we added was authorized.net, um, but I'll have, to, I'll have to go back and look. Any, which, are you looking for one specifically, Jay? Well, I was pretty vocal about the authorized.net. I was one of the originators asking for that. and I'm very happy to have it, but I have a lot of clients that just don't want to get in with authorized.net. They want to be able to use Square or something else. Or Stripe. And, well, Stripe yeah, you can, has an integration with Zero. Yeah, and we right. have the we have the Square implementation as well. So, if, but, if you, but you can't put it on your invoice. We can bring in the transactions. That's and right. That's great. But to be able to use it on the billing side is just to bring that full circle. Hey Jay, send me a nasty email. I can do that. <laughs> So, wait, so is there a payment solution with these integrations? Because I'll be honest, I haven't played with them or gotten very deep with them yet. Um, Ian, is, is there among the options out there a way to be able to send an invoice out from zero with a link that where somebody can just click on the link and pay me? There is. Yeah, so, so which one does that? So the online quotes. Uh, so any of the there's I think there's five payment gateways. Stripe being one of those. Um, Authorize and be another one. And you you choose your payment gateway inside of zero. And then just like you did with quotes, you would do the same thing with invoices. We actually built the online invoices first, which the quotes leverages, and it's the same process. And you'll get right. the same sort of screen views that you saw, which is the ability to accept uh, the payment, to do the payment, and then it processes it through your, your preferred uh, you know, uh, merchant service of choice. And then there's zero to zero, right? So if I go to, through to my zero to zero area and I, I'm invoicing a client who's using zero, they can pay me directly through zero that way too, right? Yeah, what that does is that creates the transactions automatically within the system. So it's great if you, for your clients, they're all running on zero, then basically you can set everything on an automatic fashion and everything just magically appears inside of zero, 
um, and is automatically processed and completed. So it's a ability to do everything on steroids. That's awesome. All right, um, I think that about wraps up the hour. Any last minute parting questions or parting words, Ian? Uh, you want to tell us quickly what we can expect at ZeroCon? And give us a couple more props. Uh, let's see. Well, I think uh, here I'm just getting another prop. This is the the pirate one. R. Um, we will R. have beer there, so that's we'll probably have PBR. Um, let me. So for ZeroCon, um, ZeroCon, we're going to be. And if you think about the wave of innovation that we've kind of gone through over the last three months, um, we are saving a lot of really goodness that's going to come out that we're going to announce in June. Um, we've got a lot, of, and it's you know if, if you've looked at the news when we took the 110 million from Excel um, for our next round of investment, um, the, specifically that was around enabling the U.S. and the U.K. operations to have a lot of the more product that they need, and so you're going to start to see uh, that roll out with ZeroCon in Denver. You're also going to see some really fantastic speakers, all but Seth David um, there at ZeroCon. So um, and. If you haven't been to a ZeroCon, I mean, some of the folks here have. Um, we, it's not a sit down and just kind of listen to speakers. It is a truly immersive, exciting, a lot of fun. We throw basically a huge party um, because, again, if you're not having fun, then what the heck are we doing? And so it's a real good way. To, we've got some great speakers, some really, really big name speakers that um, are, you know, it's not just from an accounting perspective, but not so. No, I'm just kidding. Um, it, it, we, we have some really good um, folks. I'm not going to announce who they are. I actually they're on the website, so you can see a few of them pop up. You, there's more information coming over the next couple of weeks. Um, but uh, it's going to blow the pants off what we did at ZeroCon a year and a half ago. So I'm super excited. It's, it's in June 2nd of, 2nd of 4th. Um, and again, I would rest up before going because it's an exhausting uh, two days and or three days if you want to do some of the pre-work stuff. Um, so put it on the calendar. Tell your friends. All right, Used to so count. Recap, I heard something about a wave of mutilation, which was a great Pixie song, by the way, and then something about taking our pants off. So definitely check out ZeroCon, and, or was it Blow the Pants Off? <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> it's one of the things. Don't, don't, make me get, don't make me get the balls out. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going for. I think um, it's a wrap. On that note, Ian, as always, thank you so much for taking the time and being with us this morning. Uh, do you want to give out uh, contact information so people can reach out to you if they have follow-up questions or concerns or comments? I don't hide, so you can uh, email me anytime at ian, I-A-N, at zero.com. Uh, Perfect. Thank you. And, Jay, send me that email. All right, and if anybody wants some zero balls, I've got them, so I'll just let me know, and I'll send you some zero, some, what is it, uh, zero blue balls, uh, blue zero <laughs> yeah. beach balls, whatever hey, I it is. I live at the beach. I can always use that. There we go. So... Oh. Send me your requests, and I'll send you my balls. <laughs> Over and out, guys. Right. 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 Bye.